How's it going Drown Ghouls and Bucket Bots? Today I'm going to be showing you guys a couple of new Buckethead scores that I recently got. For a majority of the Halloween season, I've been scoring nothing but Scream and Fun World merchandise, a couple screen use pieces, but for the most part, not so much anything for the other collections, no Michael Myers stuff, no Buckethead stuff, except for a few items. So I'm just going to go through this in the order that I received these items, and I'll tell you guys a little bit about each one. So out of today's pieces, here's the first one I scored, a Fun World Mad Hatter. This is from the very, very early Fantastic Faces line, as you can tell by the header tag. Of course, it's not technically labeled as a Fantastic Faces mask, but it's just labeled as a Mad Hatter mask. But obviously, this was produced and released around the same time, and this is actually a Buckethead piece. So there's a little bit of footage in the secret recipe, I want to say, and there's a couple of pictures where you can see Buckethead wearing essentially one of these masks. But it's just one of these masks. The R.I.P. Skull was released in several different ways, of course just as the R.I.P. Skull by itself, but also with the wig and hat attached as the Mad Hatter. It was released in several different colors for both, but Bucket only used the white versions. The main one that I had seen was essentially just the mask without the wig, without the hat, just that piece by itself, and it had quite a bit of overspray across the face because some of these, even this one, has like just some black spray right across the face. Some of them have it a little bit worse than others, so it looks really dark. For some of them, it just looks like shading. This one obviously isn't too harsh. But yeah, Bucket actually used several different versions of this mask, including just it by itself. And then he also used one of these. So I was completely unaware that this was a Bucket piece until more recently when Natternet actually released a video showing Buckethead just acting crazy on stage with Herbie or just on stage in general while wearing one of these. And just so you guys can see somewhat, it's kind of got like a cloth velvet hat here with a wig sewn into the hat as well as the mask sewn into the wig and into the hat so that it's all just one big wearable piece. While it's not a major Buckethead item, it's definitely something I'm happy to have added to the collection and of course it's also a great piece because it's a Fun World piece and tagged. These aren't normally very rare and untagged, they're one of the most common vintage Fun World pieces that you could find, either just the skull or as the whole Mad Hatter but I didn't have one, and I've never seen a tagged one until recently I did that trade with Austin Lindemann for a few other screen pieces, and this was something that he threw in as well. So yet again, a huge thank you to Austin, and if you guys aren't following him, go check him out. He makes some really, really incredible masks, some really awesome original pieces, not a lot of reproduction stuff, but that's a good thing. So the next piece was a local score. I've never really had that many local scores. This year I've gotten lucky with a couple of different things and this was another local lucky score. Here we have one of these groundbreaker zombie props and these guys are super, super rare. Bucket can be seen using this, I think in C2B3, as well as several different other albums. I wanna say he's made small appearances. I think Bucket actually took this guy to tour with him with GNR and uh, yeah, it can just be seen popping up in a lot of really, really random weird places. We've been wondering about this guy for a long time and we thought that some wouldn't pop up and recently, this season, a few of them have popped up. The first one that popped up, the Mask Hunter ended up getting and his is not rotted or in bad condition. And uh, then a second one popped up. I found that one, contacted the seller. They weren't willing to ship because I mean, it's a pretty large piece. And the final one was a lucky marketplace find. Just another one of those situations where I decided to check marketplace and there he was staring me in the face, $25 and a two and a half hour drive later, and here he is. Unfortunately, I did notice from the picture he was missing a pretty large chunk of foam out of his forehead. However, it's not that big of a deal, and seeing him in person, he's actually a little bit more rotten than I had anticipated. And a majority of these really didn't hold up well over time just because they were supposed to be outside pieces. It's essentially a foam-filled latex prop that's supposed to be outside, looking like he's busting out of the ground or crawling his way out of a grave. His hands and arms, as you can tell, are in pretty rough condition. Overall, he's pretty solid. He's not like crispy, like falling apart, but if you could really see some of the detail in that face up close, you could see that he really is rotting. He's got a lot of crackling effects going on to him, and he looks really creepy and really awesome in person. I'm kind of on the fence of what to do about him, because on one hand, I love him the way he is. I think he looks genuinely rotted because he is genuinely rotted. And on the other hand, I kind of want to save him from disintegrating, so I kind of want to do some light restoration on him, just kind of filling in places like where he's missing pieces of skin, 
maybe that spot in the forehead, kind of smoothing over some of the cracks in there, and just seeing if I could match the paint up, but I don't know. I kind of like him as he is, so I might just let him sit around for a while, and if he starts getting too bad, I'll probably try to save him just to keep him from rotting into nothing. But this is a very rare bucket head piece, and I'm very happy to have found him. Yet again, amazing that it was a local score for me, and yeah, he's just a really, really awesome prop, even without being a bucket head piece. And speaking of awesome props, let me give some props to the Mask Hunter, because the Mask Hunter found this bad boy listed on eBay and sent me the listing right away. This is another really, really rare bucket head piece, and one of the cooler masks and harder to find masks that he's used. We have a Don Post Wired, and as you guys can tell by this tag that just flew over, it is tagged. So this guy has been used for a ton of stuff. Originally, we just thought it was a GNR piece that he would rehearse with because he would wear it on stage while rehearsing, but he actually has used it on stage. There's been tons of pictures that have popped up kind of recently of him wearing this thing, and it's just a really, really awesome piece. And as it turns out, it's a very rare mask as well. This was produced by Don Post, I think in the early 90s, like 92, somewhere in there. And this was supposed to be a Hellraiser mask or a Cenobite mask. But of course, this is not even a very specific Cenobite, or at least not one that we've seen in the films. It's just kind of of that style. And this is called the Wired Mask. Even without being a bucket head piece, this thing is awesome. It has to be one of the coolest, like, modern day Don Post sculpts that I've seen. It's kind of hard to tell with close-ups, and he looks a little bit weird because he still isn't properly back in the shape. The people that shipped him to me kind of shoved him into a small box, but yeah, my favorite piece of detail is actually on the back of the head. This very, very interesting, like, H.R. Geiger-esque sculpt here in the back with these tiny little skulls on columns. It's just a very awesome, interesting piece. Of course, it's supposed to look like he has wires drug across his face, giving these indents. And maybe that's why his nose is crushed flat. Maybe it's supposed to be that way. <laughs> but it's really, really awesome. This is a really cool piece, and they actually did a few different versions of this. The main one being what you see here, just flesh, and you've got the collar on the neck. This would have been the same type that Bucket used, but they also released a version of this that was slightly yellow instead. Instead of being like this purplish, fleshy color, like bruises, it was like very pale yellow, and it actually would glow in the dark. The Mask Hunter had one of those, and we thought it might have just been some weird one-off, but recently another one did pop up, and I would have grabbed that as well if it wasn't for the fact that this one ended up costing me a bit more than I wanted to pay. I ended up getting him for 110 or so shipped, which I mean isn't too bad. I think that's roughly the same thing AJ paid for his tagged copy. And like I said, it is in immaculate condition. Very, very nice. But yeah, the glow-in-the-dark ones actually don't have this neck piece. They don't have the collar, so to speak. It's just kind of cut off, I would say, probably around that line. It's still really cool. It makes for an awesome Cenobite design. But overall, just not something I was crazy about having when I'm already running out of space. So I was super, super happy to have snagged one of these. Guys, I almost forgot to mention, but I also recently scored this Don Post Esquire mask. Now, I technically already had one of these because AJ sent me this one back in the day. However, this one... The paint's really worn, it's kind of dirty, the face looks a little bit different, the elastic's all the way gone out on it, like it's just really, really stretched out. And that's how it was whenever I got it, but this copy is like mint condition, the paint on it's perfect, it looks really, really nice. You can kind of see them compared side by side. I wear this one a lot. Um, this one not so much, I just recently got this in a trade from Wes Fowler, so this is kind of a mint condition copy, and this will be, I guess, my personal copy because I do take it with me. Pretty much everywhere. I also wanted to give a massive shout out to John Autumn, aka the Candy Snatcher, for sending me this awesome t-shirt along with a special jacket, a couple stickers, and a pin. This t-shirt is amazing. It's easily one of the most comfortable shirts I've ever worn. It's super, super soft, and as soon as I took it out of the box, I had to throw it on because it's just so nice. And that about does it. Like I said, nothing too crazy, not a ton of stuff. I haven't really been picking up that many Buckethead items recently, which really the market's been a little bit dry. I was really, really hoping that Bucket was going to do something special for Halloween. It seemed like with all the teasers and just odd, weird stuff he was putting out on the Pikes website, I'm like, he's going to do a release. It's going to be a release, whether it be a new Pike, a Halloween Pike, an album, artwork, something. Something's going to be coming up. And unfortunately, we went through all of Halloween and nothing got added, but who knows, maybe in the near future. But yeah, that wraps it up. There's nothing left to do but give you guys a few close-ups of these pieces. And thank you all so much for watching. I love you all. Hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you next time.